WikiHow 610. Chrome forward slash forward slash new tab forward slash https forward slash forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash category youth https colon double forward slash www.rapitables.com forward slash tools forward slash notepad dot html https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash make dash your dash room dash look dash cool https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash date dash in dash middle dash school https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash manage dash diarrhea dash at dash school https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash convince dash your dash parents dash to dash let dash you dash switch dash schools https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash pass dash english https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash have dash fun dash with dash your dash cousin dash for dash a dash week how to make your room look cool download article parts 1. Creating a cool foundation 2. Finding cool and useful accessories 3. Personalizing your room Plus show one more Other sections Expert Q&A Related articles References Article summary Co-authored by July Rowland Last updated, the 8th of July, 2024 there are many ways to have an awesome bedroom and impress your friends. However, if you're stumped for ideas on how to revamp that plain room, let your budget and schedule dictate what you can change. You may simply reorganize your room to freshen it up and make it look cool. Part 1. Creating a Cool Foundation Download Article 1. Lay down or display shag rugs. A shag rug can be a nice and soft addition to your room's floor but you may also nail it up on a wall for a unique display. Choose a rug with a unique pattern, shape, or color so that it draws the eye. 2. Add cool pillows to your bed or couch. You may be able to find pillows with interesting quotes pictures, designs, and textures to add to your room. Shop at furniture stores, thrift stores, and online stores. You can also print your own designs on two pillowcases at custom t-shirt stores. 3. Amp up the light for your closet. If you find it difficult to see into your closet or you just want to add a splash of light into your room, Try adding some fashionable lighting, like twinkling fairy lights or LED light strips. Make it look like you opened the door to another universe or a cool dressing room for a rock band. 1. Use hooks or tape to keep the lights in place. Purchase the lights and hooks at a dollar store or local arts and crafts store. Some lights may Come with adhesive tape or hooks. 4. Dress up your walls. Use temporary wallpaper that you can purchase at a dollar store or arts and craft store to dress up boring walls. Research online for fun ideas if you are looking for inspiration. You can also cut the wallpaper into shapes, like stars, before placing it on your wall. 2. Make sure to use temporary wallpaper so that you can change the style as often as you please. Chip and Joanna Gaines, Remodel and Interior Design Experts Choose things you love for your home. We can get so bogged down with 
design rules and comparisons that we forget to focus on the simplicity of choosing things that we love for our homes. It's not about sticking to a specific prescribed style. It's about a story. Summer sale on now. Mamashan, get £442 off plus an extra £50 off your first ORDER. Sponsored by Mamashan. Learn more. Part 2. Finding cool and useful accessories. Download article. 1. Display lava lamps. Give your room a psychedelic feel or simply add some color. You can purchase these lights online or at a vintage store. You may also be able to find them at a thrift store. Try adding two or more to create a symmetrical design or a pattern. 2. Put up old or rustic looking maps. Whether you frame them or just pin them up, old maps can create a certain vintage atmosphere for your room. You may also use them as a pinboard for places that you have traveled. Purchase them online, your local map store. Or find them at a thrift store. 3. Display some posters. Choose posters of your favorite movies, TV shows, or anime or Select interesting designs from other countries. If you are in university or college, there are often poster stores that provide unique designs that resemble artwork. You may even be able to find vintage music poster replicates. Shop online, at a thrift store, or at your local poster store. You may also look for posters at theaters, bookstores, and record stores. Don't be afraid to ask the owner of a store if you find a poster that catches your eye. 4. Place potted plants around your room. Choose unique pots and plants to take advantage of color and texture. Remember to choose plants that need little maintenance or are fake if you have a busy schedule. Plants add life to a room. Group Plants two or more plants together for symmetry or to create a pleasant pattern. If you decide to purchase live plants, remember to water them. A dead or wilted plant is not a great decor choice. 5. Display your pretty jewelry. It doesn't make sense to hide jewelry that you are proud of. Find a display case or jewelry frame that complements your room's decor to display your jewelry. You may also simply display them in a pattern on the top of your drawer. 3. 6. Hide your chargers. You may have a lot of mobile devices along with your lamp, TV, and computer. All the cords may be a nuisance and an eyesore. Purchase some storage for your chargers and cables when they need to be out. Shop online or your local electronics. Store for displays that keep the cords out of the way while blending in with the rest of your decor. 4. 7. Magnetize your makeup. If you have a messy cosmetic bag or just a lot of makeup, Simply stick magnets on the products you use often. Store them on a magnetic board by your mirror so that they remain tidy and convenient. 5. Purchase stick-on magnets at a dollar store or arts and crafts store. Part 3. Personalizing your room. Download article. 1. Create an activity space. Lay down a yoga mat for stretching or yoga, or a rubber mat. For weightlifting or more vigorous activities. Designate a corner of your room strictly for activities. You can also make a mini studio complete with motivational quotes or inspirational images for yoga. 2. Add pops of color. Instead of painting your entire room a dramatic color or even a 
single wall, paint only small accents. For example, you can paint just the inside strip of your door or the sides of your dresser. While the color may be subtle, the creative process will be fun. 6. You can also add color in your decorations. You don't have to paint if you add colorful stuffed animals or cool ornaments. 3. Create fun designs with washi tape. Use washi tape around your room in creative designs or intricate patterns. You can purchase a variety of colors and patterns at your local arts and crafts store or your dollar store. Find inspiration online or simply add borders to pictures or posters. 7. 4. Add fairy or lead strip lights. Fairy lights and lead light strips can be purchased online. Your local hardware store, arts and crafts store, or even dollar store. Frame pictures or create designs with these easy to shape lights. Use hooks or tape to keep them in place. How do you balance function and style when designing a room? Expert Q&A Question What color walls will make my room feel peaceful and serene? Julie Rowland Certified Color Specialist Expert Answer Serenity comes from using colors that are lower in chroma, more muted, and a palette that doesn't combine too many colors. It can even be varying shades of the same color, monochromatic schemes that are high contrast, like black and white, feel dynamic and exciting, but not necessarily soothing. Usually lighter or mid-tone shades work best. A super dark palette is dramatic, but will not feel chill to the average person. While people think of watery colors like blues, greens, and aquas as being relaxing, you can actually achieve a similar feeling with muted pinks, peaches, or beiges. Again, the key is colors that aren't too bold, and avoiding extremes of light and dark within that color palette. Not helpful too helpful for Question what colors will pair well with turquoise in my bedroom? Julie Rowland Certified Color Specialist Expert Answer A classic combination is turquoise with orange or coral. These are called complementary colors because they are opposite each other on the color wheel. This combo tends to have a beachy or retro feel. But you can pair almost any Pure color with turquoise and it will work, as long as the other color is similar in intensity to whatever turquoise you're using. The right pink, yellow, green, cobalt, blue, or lavender can all be stunning with turquoise. I've also seen it paired with red to good effect. Not helpful one helpful seven. Question. How can I incorporate more bold colors into my bedroom decor? Julie Rowland Certified Color Specialist Expert Answer My rule is, the bolder the color, the smaller the area. If you gravitate to strong colors, introduce them first in small touches, like a lamp, curtain, or pillow. These Items are easily changed if you tire of them, and don't usually require a huge outlay of cash. Want more color? Go a little bigger. Try a colorful rug or side chair. Tips Add lighting. Lights can add energy especially if you choose different colors and designs. Create DIY decorations that match your room's theme. If you're using fairy lights, the best place to put them is above your bed. It will look absolutely beautiful when your bed is made and the lights are dimmed. Show more tips. Tips from our readers.
Add personalized touches through easy DIY projects. Displaying your creativity makes your room unique. There are endless ideas online for all skill levels if you need inspiration. Hide battery powered LEDs around dark corners or under furniture to make your room glow an eerie blue when the lights go out. It's simple but looks awesome. Incorporate items with personal meaning, like childhood toys, instruments you used to play, or favorite books. The history they represent tells your story. Your bed is the centerpiece, make it cozy with soft textures like fleece and furry throw blankets. Adding plush pillows encourages actual use, too. Make a dream vision board with pictures of your hopes, goals, and favorite things. Fairy lights make great backlighting to highlight it. Show your inner self through purposeful decor, don't just follow trends. Surprise people by fearlessly revealing what matters to you. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. Submit. Warnings. Make sure you get the OK from your parents or landlord if you are planning to paint. Walls or furniture. Try to keep paint away from younger kids and pets, as it may contain lead or other toxic. Ingredients. Ask a family member to help you paint your walls for you if you're young. If you want to paint the fan, clean it first so that the paint stays and looks clean. Youth Youth Dating How to Date in Middle School Download Article Methods 1. Asking someone out 2. Spending time together Other Sections Questions and Answers Video Tips and Warnings Related articles References Article summary Co-authored by Stephanie Safran Last updated, the 24th of May, 2024 approved Young Romance If you want to learn to negotiate the tricky dating world that is your local middle school, you can learn a few tricks and tips to make it go as smoothly as possible. You can learn how to ask someone out the right way, and how to spend time together when you're without car or income. Method 1. Asking someone out. Download article. 1. Be sure that you want to date. In middle school, you're usually feeling a rush of all kinds of emotions. Your hormones are going wild and you might find yourself beginning to feel romantically attracted to people. But in middle school, dating should not be your priority. Focus on things like friendships, school, and developing your own unique personality more than you focus on finding someone to date. 1. If you want to date, talk to your parents about it and seek their Guidance. Make sure you're allowed to date before you move forward. If you don't want to date, that's perfectly fine. Most middle school relationships exist largely online and in the imagination, anyway, which means you should take what other people are saying with a big grain of salt. Don't date if you don't want to. 2. Find someone that you like. Who are you crushing on lately? Who seems like they would be nice to be around, more than a regular type of friend? Who are you attracted to? Try to find someone you think would make for a fun date, someone you can imagine hanging out with, maybe a lot. Someone you wouldn't mind kissing. Make sure they don't have a date already, and aren't going with anyone. It can be awkward to ask someone who is already going out with someone. Make sure that you already talk to this person during the week, so 
Asking them out won't be as awkward, and the relationship will work out better, since you already know a decent amount about the person. 3. Find the right time to ask. While it's always fine to ask something as simple as, Will. You go out with me. It's sometimes even better to have a specific reason in mind, so you can have an excuse to talk. Is a dance coming up? Asking someone to a dance is one of the most common ways of asking someone out on a date. If it goes well, you can sometimes stay a couple afterward. If not, you will have fun anyway. What about a homecoming game? Or another sports game. Ask if you. Can go together. Maybe a new movie is coming out soon that everyone's talking about. Ask someone to go with you to the movie. 4. Make sure you're looking good. If you're going to put yourself out there, you want to. Make sure you're looking your best. Make sure your clothes are clean and nice, so you can look good and feel confident enough to ask someone out. 2. Shower that morning and do your hair, paying attention to it a little more than normal. You don't have to look like a movie star, so you don't want to overdo it, but take some time to look your best. 5. Wait until you have a private moment. Try to find a minute that you two can be together to ask. Sometimes, passing period can be a good chance for this, or right after school. If you can't seem to find a time when the person is alone, just ask, hey, can I talk to you for a second? Try to do it in person, if you can, instead of over the phone. For a lot of people, Asking someone out via text or chatting will be a bad idea, while it can work for others. If you chat regularly with someone, it might be fine. There's always a chance that you get shot down. If this happens in front of a bunch of people, it'll be worse than if it happens in private. 6. Introduce yourself, if necessary. If you've been attracted to someone who doesn't know who you are, they'll likely say no if you just walk up and ask them to go out. The best first idea is probably to introduce yourself briefly, and let them know what your connection is. Hey, I'm underscore 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 underscore. I am in your history class. I was wondering. 7. Ask for a date, out of the blue. When you've got an opportunity, just cut to the chase. And ask. You don't need to give it a lot of thought or try to be clever. Just be kind. Complimentary, and clear. No lines. Say something like, I've noticed you for a long time, and you seem like a really sweet, cool person. I like you a lot. Will you like to go to the dance? With me. Don't wait to be asked, or assume that someone will ask you out. Whether you're a boy or a girl. It's perfectly fine for girls to ask boys in. Middle school, or at any age. 8. Make sure it's okay with all of your parents. Since you're underage, it's still important to. Get your parents' permission about things like dating, as well as the parents of the person you're asking out. Just ask, and then follow their wishes. This is especially important if you're going to ask someone to go out in public with you. It needs to be okay with all of your parents, especially if you're going to be getting a ride. You can always spend time at school together with someone, regardless of how your parents feel about it. It's better to have permission, of course, but Romeo and Juliet were middle school aged, after all. Method 2. 
Spending time together. Download article. 1. Text each other. Make sure you're allowed to text with your date, then trade numbers. And start texting. You can be conversing and laughing together, even if you're not actually. Together. Try to be a good conversationalist and give you date something to. Respond to. Don't just write hey. Ask a question, make an observation. Have something real to talk about. Don't write one word responses with. A date. If you can't talk right now, say so. For some good articles about texting a crush or a date. Click here or here. 2. Have phone or FaceTime forward slash Skype dates. Talking with your date can be just as much fun. And just as important to a young romance as actually going anywhere. Set up dates on. FaceTime or Skype or some other chatting service, or talk on the phone. Arrange something you can do together, even if you're not together. If you both have a show you like, watch it at the same time and talk about it on the phone. Or just leave the FaceTime forward slash Skype window open while you do homework together. 3. Go to dances. One of the best and easiest ways to go on a date in middle school is to go to a dance together. It gives you a great reason to ask and a fun thing to do together. Most dances in middle school are right after school, too, which means you don't have to bother any parents for a ride. If you're scared of dancing, practice. Pump up some tunes in your bedroom or on your headphones and work on your moves ahead of time. You don't have to be super smooth, but you do want to avoid looking dorky. If your school doesn't have many dances, you can go to other school events together, especially football or basketball games. Go to any after school club or a school play together as a date. 4. Go to a movie together. Ask your date if they'd like to see a new movie. Maybe the night. It comes out to make it seem like an event. You could even get the tickets ahead of time. And maybe plan to get a bite to eat, or an ice cream, after the movie, if you're allowed. Going to the movies can be a good way to make a date a little less. Awkward. You don't have to talk too much, so it's a good choice if you're. Feeling nervous. If you have an older sibling, see if they'll drive you to the date instead of your parents. Way cooler. 5. Sit together at lunch. While it might not seem like a date, one of the absolute easiest ways that you can hang out with someone you're dating in middle school is to spend time together at lunch. Find a quiet table where you can sit together or sit together with your friends and let everyone see how disgustingly cute you two are. Good fun either way. Offer to do little things for your date, like throw away their tray for them, or hold out the chair. It might seem old school, or like something your parents would do, but it's good to make someone feel special. 6. Arrange to walk home from school together. If you don't get to see each other much at school, spend some time together afterward by walking home, if you can. It's a good way to be able to get some private time and talk without a bunch of people around. Make sure both of your parents know you'll be doing this, and only do it. If you'd normally walk home from school, if they know you're together, you can linger a while. Walk slow. You can also walk somewhere else, if it's convenient and you're allowed. Head to the mall, or to some other store to walk around after school. You can also arrange another non-school time you could go on a walk. 
together, maybe in a park close by. 7. Ask your parents if your date can come over to your house. Have your date over for dinner some night, or come over and watch a movie at your house. This can be a good way to let your family meet someone you're dating, and let your date meet your family. Big step in a relationship. 3. You'll need to talk to your parents about this, because they'll probably not want you two to be locked up in a room together, but maybe they'll let you have the living room to yourselves. 8. Make it snapshot official, if you want to. Lots of middle school romance will happen. Primarily on Snapchat. If you're going out with someone, you need to discuss how much of it you want to be public, and how much of it you want to be private together with the person you're dating, and be respectful. Remember, lots of people can see it. It's important to ease up on the digital PDA. The occasional kiss a face. Emoji exchange is okay, but not more than once every couple days. 9. Be real with your date. The only way you need to act when you're with your date, when you're talking to your date, and when you're thinking of something to say is to just act naturally. Be yourself. Joke around, goof off, don't try to be someone you're not. Give sincere compliments, when they're deserved. I thought you looked really nice today will always be appreciated when you mean it. Act the same around your date as you act around your friends, which is what your date should be, unless of course you act like a total dweeb with your friends. The point is, if you're not friends, you probably shouldn't be dating. 10. Go slow. In middle school, you're still developing and maturing, and different people will develop and mature more quickly than others. You might be feeling a rush of conflicting emotions and like your hormones are raging out of control. That's because they are. It's important to take a step back, calm down, and let things go slowly. You've got your whole life ahead of you to date. Sometimes, it's okay to try for a kiss, when the time is right, but only if both people are comfortable. Be open and honest with the person that you're with. Sometimes, middle school romances seem devastating when they're over. Try to relax. You'll look back on this in less than two or three years. And laugh. 11. Give your date some space. If you're seeing somebody in middle school, that's great. But that doesn't mean you're married. Who your date talks to on Snapchat, or sits with at. Lunch shouldn't be a source of your obsession. You're two individuals who like to spend time together. That's it. 4. Don't get desperate and needy while you're dating someone. No texts or Snapchat messages that say things like, where are you? Spend time with your own friends, making separate time to do things that you enjoy doing alone. There'll always be time for dating. 12. Try to have some dates in real life. Lots of middle school romances don't last very long, and are mostly on the internet and at school. That's okay. It's hard to do. Much when you don't have any money and you don't have any car. But if you really like spending time with someone, try to make a point of spending some real time with each other, not just posting on the other's story or page. Community Q&A Question Can you date your best friend if she likes you? Ruby, top answerer. 2467 answers. Knows about Animal Crossing, New Leaf, 
first menstrual cycle, menic, autism, spectrum, and more. Ruby. Top answer. If you both like each other, then yes, you can date. The wiki how date your best. Friend has some good advice. How to deal with diarrhea if you're stuck at school. Download article. The Modern Student's Guide on Getting Through a Rough Day. Co-authored by Roy Native, MD and Eric McAleur. Last updated, the 19th of January, 2024 fact checked. Surviving the school day. Dealing with the physical symptoms. Treating the diarrhea. Expert Q&A. Tips. Diarrhea can be painful and irritating at home, so it might be scary if you get diarrhea at school where you can't wait it out in the comfort of your own bathroom. Diarrhea is often caused by an infection, although it's possible you just ate something your tummy didn't like. In most cases, it's best to stay home for a couple of days to allow yourself to get better. However, you may be forced to go school if you've got some mandatory testing or a parent who won't let you stay home. In any case, we'll help you get through this. Things you should know. Diarrhea is a valid reason to stay home from school, so tell your parent what's going on if you're still in high school or grade school. Use the bathroom during each break and don't hesitate to leave class without permission. If you need to go, drink plenty of water and eat a light lunch of bread, bananas, and water, skip the fatty or greasy food to avoid upsetting your stomach. Method 1. Surviving the school day Download article 1. Reach out to your parents or your teachers, to get help. If you haven't told a parent about your diarrhea and you want to get picked up, text or call them as soon as you can. Diarrhea is a sickness and it justifies staying home, so they might agree to call the school and come get you. If you're staying at school but you'll need to leave for the bathroom regularly, Ask to talk to your teacher privately and tell them you're having stomach problems. They'll might dismiss you to the nurse so you can deal with the issue privately. Or let you use the bathroom as much as you need. 1. It's okay to ask your teacher if you can talk outside of the classroom if you are embarrassed and want to let them know what's going on. Without anyone around. Two. Use the bathroom during each of your breaks. Even if you feel like you don't have to. Go, try and use the bathroom whenever you have a bathroom break or time between. Classes. This may help ensure that you don't experience any flare-ups during class or. Another inconvenient time. If you end up late for class, explain to your teacher that. You're sick and apologize for being tardy. 2. Put your own health first. If you're having trouble communicating with your teacher or are not receiving the help you need, do not hesitate to put your own wellness first, even if it means walking out of the class without permission. 3. Sit near the exit for each class. If you have to go to the bathroom often, let your teacher know what's going on and ask if you can sit next to the door. If it's open seating, grab the nearest seat. This way, you can slip out if you feel ill without disrupting the class or drawing attention to yourself. 3. Consider asking to sit on the floor next to the door if necessary. If Anyone asks, just say my back is killing me today and sitting on those chairs makes it worse. Avoid making a commotion if you do leave. Get up as gently as possible. And quietly open the door to avoid drawing attention to yourself. 
helpful. Bring a change of clothing just in case of an emergency. Before you leave for school. Pack an extra set of underwear and pants. The odds are extremely low you'll need them. But they'll help relieve any anxiety you feel about having an accident at a minimum. If you're already at school, ask the school nurse if they have a spare set of clothing or call your parents to see if they can bring you new clothes. 4. Cover the back of your trousers with your book bag or shirt until you can. Get to a bathroom or the nurse's office to change. Bring identical clothing if you can. This way, nobody will notice if you change. If anyone asks, you can say I ate too much at lunch and my other jeans were uncomfortably tight or I spilled pop on my other pair. 5. Do your best to not worry about it. It's easy to feel ashamed, embarrassed, or anxious. If you're experiencing diarrhea at school. If it helps, remember that everyone poops and everybody will experience diarrhea at some point in their lives. You will get through this. So try to not fixate on the diarrhea. 5. If the diarrhea is the result of irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, you'll actually be less likely to experience the urge to poop if you worry about it. 6. Wash your hands with soap and water after each bathroom trip. Each time you use the bathroom, thoroughly clean your hands. This helps prevent the spread of diarrhea to others, and it may keep you from getting sicker than you already are. 6. Rinse your hands with warm water and then lather with soap for at least 20 seconds, which is about as long as singing happy birthday. Twice. Rinse your hands again thoroughly to clean off any soap residue. Use a hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol if soap and water aren't available. Cover both the front and back of each of your hands and rub in the sanitizer the same way you would soap. Method 2. Dealing with the physical symptoms. Download article 1. Be as cool and zen as possible to keep your stomach calm. Feeling panicky or anxious about diarrhea may make it worse since the body's response to emergencies is to loosen bowel control. By talking yourself through it and reframing the situation, you can calm yourself and your bowels. Remember, stomach issues are totally normal. Everyone gets them. 7. Avoid thoughts such as what if I don't make it to the bathroom and this is awful. Instead, remember that accidents are rare and that you've never had one or that if you stay calm, your bowels will stay calm, too. Do some deep breathing exercises to keep you and your intestines calm. Some people actually get diarrhea when they're anxious or nervous about other things. If this is your situation, know that it's totally normal. Your stomach issues will pass when your stress does, and you can help them pass even faster using the breathing exercises mentioned above. 2. Resist squeezing or straining your rectum. It's common to naturally squeeze or contract the muscles around your rectum if you have diarrhea. However, these actions can actually make diarrhea worse by causing muscle fatigue, weakness, pain, and cramping. Avoid straining or squeezing as much as you can. Instead, just take your time. And don't force it on the toilet. 8. This is true when you're actually using the bathroom, but it's also good. Guidance when it comes to holding it in the classroom. Try not to flex or squeeze unless it's 100% necessary. 3. See the school nurse for medication or safe refuge. 
if diarrhea strikes during school. Let the school nurse know. They'll either give you something for your stomach, or provide a safe and empathetic space to stay while you're dealing with stomach pain or a nasty fit of diarrhea. 9. Be open with the nurse and don't feel any shame or embarrassment. They're used to seeing all kinds of medical issues. Ask the nurse if they can give you an excuse for your teachers, a place to lie down, or even some medication. 4. Distract people from tummy sounds if you're self-conscious. The odds are extremely low people can hear your stomach making noise, and even if they do, they'll just think you're hungry. Still, you can cover the noise up if you want to disguise it. 10. Distract From the sound by coughing, sneezing, shifting in your chair, or laughing if the timing is appropriate. If you're trying to distract people from the sound when you're using the toilet, coughing loudly or flushing the toilet while you're pooping can cover the sound up. Method 3. Treating the diarrhea Download article 1. Drink plenty of clear liquids. Chances are that you're losing a lot of fluids and valuable electrolytes if you have diarrhea. Staying hydrated will help you feel better and flush out your system quickly. Have at least 8 to 10 glasses of water over the course of the day, and Aim to get a glass of water after each bowel movement. 11. If you can't get a cup of water at school, at least hit the water fountain. Up as often as you possibly can. Consider carrying your liquid with you in a bottle or thermos. Let your teacher or the school nurse know why you have it in case there is a problem. 2. Eat simple and easy to digest foods. If you have diarrhea, your stomach is probably very upset and needs a chance to rest. Eating according to the Brad diet, which stands for bananas, rice, applesauce, and toast. This will help settle your stomach and intestinal tract as well as replace electrolytes. 12. Have boiled potatoes, crackers, and gelatin at lunch if you can. Consider Carrying your lunch and snacks such as soda crackers can also help ease your stomach. Other good options include pretzels, apricots, and sports drinks. If you bring perishable foods to school, make sure that you can put your lunch in a refrigerator until it's time to eat it. You can also keep your Food cold with ice packs in your lunch box. 3. Skip heavy, greasy, fatty, or spicy foods. It's important to be gentle on your stomach if you are hungry when you have diarrhea. Stay away from spicy, fatty, or fried foods as well as dairy products. These may further upset your stomach and make your diarrhea worse. 13. Avoid adding any spices to your food or eating spicy meals at lunch, such as Mexican food. These can irritate your stomach lining. Ask if there are alternatives to eat and drink for lunch if you can't find something other than the daily meal and milk. 4. Take some diarrhea medication if you can. Ask a teacher, parent, or the school nurse. For some medication, like Imodium or Pepto-Bismol. These may reduce the number of bowel movements you have and put your mind at ease in class or when you're walking through the halls. 14. Be aware that some medications don't work for all kinds of diarrhea and may not be safe for you depending on your other medical conditions. Always check with a parent or medical professional if you aren't sure. Make sure to follow the packaging instructions if you do take any meds. 
If you don't, it could make you sicker. 5. Take it easy and avoid doing more than necessary. Moving around too much may also make you feel worse and as though you need to use the bathroom more often. Don't exert yourself more than you need to in your classes. Consider sitting out for classes, such as gym or extracurricular sports. 15. Give your teachers a note from your parents explaining that you are sick and need to not exert yourself too much if necessary. 6. Carry wipes in case you need to clean up or soothe yourself. It's common for your bum to get irritated by wiping too often and rough school toilet paper can make this worse. Keep some soft and moist wipes in your bag to prevent or soothe any discomfort you may have. These are ideal for cleanups or soothing pain after using the bathroom. 16. Try either regular moist wipes or even baby wipes, which are generally gentler on the skin. However, don't flush anything except normal toilet paper down the drain, as baby wipes can clog. Sures. Expert Q&A. Question. Should I wear a skirt on the day I have diarrhea? Timothy Sherman, RN. Registered Nurse. Expert answer. You should wear loose-fitting and uncomplicated clothing that is easy to remove. Not helpful 28 helpful 122. Question. What should I do if the teacher doesn't allow me to go to the toilet? Timothy Sherman, RN. Registered nurse. Expert answer. Getting permission is best, but, at the cost of your health, it is not necessary. Place your health first, and communicate with your instructor to improve their understanding of your needs. Not helpful 28 helpful 146. Question. What if I do not have a school nurse? Timothy Sherman, RN. Registered nurse. Expert answer. Seek the assistance of an instructor. In the absence of a health professional, it should be the responsibility of the staff at your school to get appropriate medical care for you. If nobody helps you and your condition is dangerously worsening, contact emergency medical services. Not helpful 19 helpful 97. How to convince your parents to let you switch schools. Download article. Parts. 1. Planning your argument for changing schools. 2. Scripting your conversation. 3. Approaching your parents. Other sections. Questions and answers. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Article summary. Co-authored by Laura Urban, LCSW. Last updated, the 10th of July, 2024 approved. School is an important part of your life. 1. You want to make sure that you're somewhere you feel comfortable and enjoy. It might take time to convince your parents that you need to switch schools, but if you have good reasons and a good argument, you can successfully help them to understand why you want to change schools. Part 1. Planning your argument for changing schools. Download article. 1. Write down your primary reason for wanting to change schools. 2. Before you can make a good argument with your parents, you need to understand why you really want to change schools. You need to be able to state this reason clearly. Some reasons you might want to change schools include You've been dealing with bullying, and you don't think it's going to get better or you don't feel comfortable staying around those people. 
before asking your parents make sure you're certain you'd like to switch. Writing pros and cons may help. If you know this school will cost money, show them how much you want to go to this school despite the cost. You feel lost in the crowd of a large school with large classes, and you'd like a smaller environment. You feel like the school is too strict forward slash nice and they never listen to your opinion. You don't think your school is helping you academically. You might need a more challenging school or a school where you could have more individualized help. There's another school that has programs you're really interested in. Like a superior drama, music, art, band or sports program. The social environment is not what you want, maybe you don't have a lot of friends or have different views than your peers. When presenting this reason, word it carefully so it doesn't give your parents the idea that you just want to party. Don't say it like the only thing in school is about having friends, either. Tell them you need a study buddy, and no one at your current school is willing to help you out. As you are writing down this reason, make sure it is important enough to switch. For example, if you just don't like math, and your school gives you a lot of homework, that's not a good reason to switch. Or, if your boyfriend or best friend goes to a different school, this is not necessarily a good enough reason to switch. 2. Outline timeliness for changing schools. This will affect how you approach your parents about your situations. If you give your parents exact dates that you want to change schools, it will make it easier for them to say yes and not put off letting you switch. If you're being bullied, you might want to make a mid-year switch. However, if you want to change to a school that will push you more academically, then you could consider switching for the next academic year, as this will be easier to arrange. Make a calendar on a piece of paper, or print out a calendar, and write the date you want to switch schools. Then, write down a date to have a conversation with your parents about changing. You want to give them as much advance notice as possible, at least a few months. 3. Look at schools you'd like to attend. 3. Before you talk to your parents about switching schools, you want to look at alternative schools you might like to attend. That way, you can tell your parents why you'd like to go to a different School. Look at schools based on your reason for switching. For example, if you want to change schools because you don't feel challenged academically, look at schools that have a lot of honors programs. 4. Write down your positive reasons for changing schools. It can be tempting to only talk about all the bad things about your experience at your current school. While it's important to tell your parents what's going on to make you want to switch, you also want to show them the benefits of changing. Write a list of all the good things you find out about other schools. If you have friends, or even friends on Facebook, that go to schools, you'd like to consider, ask them to tell you what they like about the school so you can pass it along to your parents. Part 2. Scripting your conversation. Download article. 1. Write it out and practice. You should approach this conversation almost like you are preparing to give an important speech. 4. You want to write out how you want the conversation to go. Visualize it going well. Practice saying all your reasons out loud to yourself in the mirror or to a friend. 2. Come up with an introduction. 
You want to get your parents' full attention as you convince them to help you in switching schools. Say something like, hey, mom and dad. Can we all sit down at the table? Together. I have something I'd like to talk about with you, and I'd really love to hear what you think. You want to let your parents know that this is important to you and that you appreciate them listening to your thoughts. 3. Keep your words calm and mature. Even if your parents don't respond at first, you don't want to come across as whiny because this will make it less likely that your parents will support you in switching schools. At the same time, be honest. 5. You want them to know how much staying in your current situation will hurt you. Make your statements sincere and to the point. If you're being bullied, don't be too embarrassed to show them how much it's affecting your performance at school and how much it hurts. You say something like, there is a group of kids in my class that writes mean notes to me every day and steal things out of my desk. They call me names, and it makes me sad. I've asked them to stop, and I've talked to the teacher, but they still do it behind her back. I have a hard time enjoying school or focusing because I can't stop thinking about it. If you think you need a school with more academic attention say something like, I've been having a hard time finishing my work in school because I don't understand it. There are so many kids in my class that the teacher usually doesn't have time to help me. Or, if you want more of a challenge, say, I get all A's at school because the work is too easy. I finish all my work first, and I end up just sitting there in class. My teacher doesn't have time to make special assignments for me. 4. Write out your positives. These are the reasons that changing would improve your overall life. Some examples of positive reasons to practice might be. I'm really interested in learning to play music. Jackson Middle School has the best band program in the state, and it's only 10 minutes away. I'd really get to work on my skills there. Street John's school only has 10 students in each class. If I went there, I'd be able to get more help with my work, and my grades would get better. Central Middle School has a lot of science and math classes I could take. They even have a physics class. I want to be an engineer one day, and it's never too early to start learning. 5. Make your conclusion open-ended. You don't want your parents to have to decide. Right then whether you can change. That pressure will make them more likely to say no. Out of convenience. End the conversation with a statement like, Thanks for listening to me. Take some time to think about what I said, and let me know what you think. I really hope you'll think about letting me change schools. Part 3. Approaching your parents. Download article. 1. Bring up the subject gradually. When you sit down to talk to your parents about schools, you don't want them to be completely surprised by the fact that you want to change. If you have an emergency, like severe bullying, you should talk to your parents immediately. Otherwise, let them get a sense of your situation before you ask them to talk with you. Make it clear to them that you're unhappy in your school. Every day, tell them one little thing that bothered you at school when they ask about your day. For example, let them know, we got our math tests back today, and I didn't do so well. I went to ask my teacher a few questions about what I got wrong, but she didn't have time to talk to 
Me. Expert Tip. Mosh Ratson, MFT, PCC. Marriage and Family Therapist. Create the right setting for family conversations. If you need to have a serious conversation with your parents, schedule it for a time and place free of distractions. Even if past talks haven't gone well, treat this as a fresh opportunity for you all to connect respectfully. 2. Do nice things for your parents before you try to talk to them. 6. This is a classic part of persuasion in any situation. Be especially kind to your parents in the few weeks before you want to actually ask them to switch schools. Don't argue with them or talk back to them. Do the little things they ask the first time like cleaning your room and picking up after yourself. 3. Pick a good time to talk. You don't want to sit down and talk to your parents about switching schools while they are stressed or in a hurry. Find them when they are relaxing and ask them if they have a minute to talk to you. For example, a good time to talk might be after dinner once everyone is full and the house is clean. 4. Write them a letter. Sometimes it can be difficult to talk to your parents about certain situations. This especially helps if you're not sure how to let your parents know you're being bullied. After you give them the letter, they'll come to approach the conversation with you. This can take some of the pressure off of starting a serious conversation. Especially if you're being bullied, you can use a letter to let your Parents know exactly what your bullies are doing to you, so you don't have to say it out loud, but your parents will still know how serious your situation is. Community Q&A Question I am scared of going to school and want to leave, but I don't want my parents to be upset with me because they tried so hard to get me into my school. Community answer. Your parents want you to be happy in your school. I'm sure that's why they tried. So hard to get you into it in the first place. They would want you to talk to them. About your fear of going to school and why you want to leave so they can help. You. Not helpful 119 helpful 416. Question. How do I tell my mum that I'm being bullied? Community answer. If you have a hard time talking about it, try writing it down and giving her a note. Not helpful 142 helpful 276. Question. I want to change schools to be with my boyfriend, but my mom doesn't. No I have a boyfriend. What should I do? Community answer. This might not be the best reason to change schools. Consider telling your mom. You have a boyfriend, so you can find other ways to spend more time with him. Not helpful 290 helpful 331. See more answers. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Talk to your teachers about the problems that are causing you to think about moving. Schools. If you have a serious issue, they can recommend that you switch to your parents. Go to your counselor, and try to discuss issues with her. A counselor can also give a recommendation to your parents. Don't be afraid to talk to your parents about school issues they will most likely understand. Show more tips. Tips from our readers. If you have friends at the other school, ask them about the positives and negatives of going there. Let your parents know what your friends say, or even have your friends with you to help convince your parents. Don't rush and tell your parents everything in one day. Instead, tell them bit by 
bit and eventually request that you would like to move schools. How to pass English. Download article. Methods. 1. Reading difficult literature. 2. Writing polished essays. 3. Improving your vocabulary. Plus show 3 more. Other sections. Questions and answers. Video. References. Article summary. Co-authored by Michelle Golden, PhD. Last updated, the 29th of October, 2023. Fact checked. Passing your English class may seem impossible if you have struggled with the subject. In the past. However, there are some strategies that can help. To pass your English class. You will need to find some new ways to get organized, develop strategies for getting the most out of class time, and incorporate some good habits for passing your English tests. If you are willing to put in a little extra time and effort, then you can pass your English class. Method 1. Reading difficult literature. Download article. 1. Ask questions before you begin. Asking yourself some pre-reading questions can make it easier for you to retain what you read. Before you start reading a text, determine what you need to discover from the text. Some instructors will provide students with a list of questions to help them stay focused as they read. You might ask your instructor about good questions to keep in mind as you read. You can also develop your own questions. For example, you might simply ask, what is the focus of this chapter? 2. Take your time. Give yourself plenty of time to read and take breaks as needed. It is better to go slowly when you read a text than to rush through it and have to reread it. Later on. 1. Make sure that you provide yourself with plenty of time to read and understand what you read. For example, if you have to read 40 pages of a book by Friday, start reading on Monday and just read 10 pages per night. Don't put off reading until Thursday night. 3. Write in the margins. Making notes in the margins whenever you encounter something important is more effective than highlighting or underlining the passage. Try reading with a pen in your hands instead of holding a highlighter. You can write keywords in the margins, ask questions, or comment on something that just happened. 4. Summarize what you have read. Writing summaries of what you just read can help you to commit the information to memory as well. After you finish reading a chapter of a book or a short story, take a minute to write a brief summary of what you just read. In your summary, don't worry about including every little detail. Instead, try to provide a nice overview of the action. You also might want to include a paragraph where you discuss your ideas about the reading. For example, if something surprising happened in the chapter, you might talk about how you reacted to it and why. Summaries are also a good place to record information about symbols, themes, and characters. For example, you might note that the author uses nature symbolism to describe certain characters. 5. Use online study guides after reading. There are many online guides that you can utilize in order to better comprehend the literature that you're assigned to read. Websites like Sparknotes and Cliff's Notes provide summaries, character analyzes, interpretations, helpful hints, essay tips and more for many different books. Read these. After completing your reading assignment to feel more confident in understanding the material. 2. 
Don't rely solely on reading Spark Notes or Cliff's Notes. Reading only. These guides will usually not give you enough information to be successful. 6. Tell someone about the reading. Teaching someone else about the text that you have been reading is a great way to commit the information to memory as well. Try telling a classmate or friend about the chapter you just read. When you tell someone about the reading, try to summarize the main ideas and explain anything that might be difficult to understand if you have not read the book. Make sure that you explain the reading in your own words. Don't just repeat parts of what you read word for word. Method 2. Writing polished essays. Download article. 1. Take time to prewrite. Prewriting, also known as invention, is what you do to generate ideas before you actually write a paper. While it may be tempting to skip prewriting and just start drafting your essay for English class, it is worth taking the time to prewrite. By spending time developing your ideas before you write, you can improve the quality of your work. Free writing. This is when you write as much as you can without stopping. Even if your mind is blank, you should write my mind is blank until you get an idea to write about. After you finish writing, read over your free write and identify any important ideas that might be useful for your paper. Listing This is when you create a list of all of everything you can think of that is relevant to the essay topic. When you have listed as much as you can read over your list and identify any useful information. Clustering This is when you use lines and circles to connect your ideas on a piece of paper. For example, you can begin by writing your topic at the center of the page and then draw lines coming from this idea. Keep drawing more lines and making connections until you are out of Ideas. 3. 2. Research your topic. Some English papers will require you to conduct research before you write. If you have to write a research paper, then make sure that you spend some time finding quality sources and reading them carefully. Search your library's databases rather than just doing a basic internet search. You will be more likely to find quality sources by using your library's database. Check with a librarian if you are not sure how to use your library's databases. 3. Create an outline. An outline provides the basic structure for an essay. Outlines can be as detailed as you want and this can be a great way to keep yourself focused when you Start drafting your paper. 4. Outlining your essay before you get started can help you write a better paper as well. 4. Draft your essay. Drafting is when you take your notes, outline, and all of the ideas in your head and put them onto paper in essay form. If you have done adequate free writing, research, and outlining, then this step should not be too difficult. Keep in mind that if you struggle with the drafting phase of the writing process, then you can always return to one of the previous phases and come back to the drafting phase when you feel ready. Remember to use your outline to guide you as you write. 5. Revise your work. Revising is when you go over a piece of writing before you submit it. To determine if you need to add, delete, reorganize, or clarify something. Revising your work can help you to develop your ideas and catch minor mistakes as well. Make sure 
that you allow yourself plenty of time to read over your work and revise it as needed. You can always swap papers with a friend and provide feedback for each other. Just make sure that the friend is someone who you trust to provide good feedback. You might also consider asking your instructor or a writing center tutor to look over your paper for you and give you revision suggestions. Having a few days to revise is ideal, but if you can only spare a few hours, then that is fine as well. All essays benefit from revision, so do not consider this as an optional step. Try to give yourself a break before you revise. Even taking a few hours away from the paper will allow you to return to it with fresh eyes. 6. Ask to rewrite unsuccessful essays. If you tried your best but didn't do as well as you wanted on an essay assignment, ask to meet with your instructor about how the essay can be improved. After getting extensive feedback, ask your instructor if you can rewrite your essay and apply their revision suggestions for partial or extra credit. This may be an opportunity to improve your grade and your writing abilities, and the worst they can say is no. Method 3. Improving your vocabulary Download article 1. Make flashcards If you need to master certain vocabulary words for a test, then making Flashcards is a great way to commit these words to memory. To make flashcard, write the word on one side of an index card and then write the definition of the word on the other side. You might also find it helpful to provide yourself with an example of how to use the word in a sentence. Keep the flashcards with you and study them whenever you have a few spare minutes. For example, you can study your flashcards while waiting in line or riding the bus. 2. Read for fun. Reading is an excellent way to improve your vocabulary and grammar skills. 5. Try to discover a book or series of books that you enjoy and read during your spare time. Read as much as possible and choose books that are slightly challenging for you. Look up words that you do not understand when you are reading. Make sure to make a note of the word's definition as well. 3. Use new words in conversation and in writing. Using new words will help you to remember them and figure out how to use them. Try to use the new words that you learn as often as you can. For example, you might try out a new word in a conversation with a friend or include a few of the new words that you have learned in an English essay. Keeping a journal where you try out new words is another great option. 4. Consider getting a tutor. If you struggle with English sometimes, then getting a tutor from the writing center at your school may help you to develop your skills. A tutor can work with you on any areas that give you trouble, such as grammar, vocabulary, or reading. Most schools provide tutor services to students as a free benefit. Your fees and tuition help to cover the costs of providing these services. Method 4. Setting yourself up for success. Download article. 1. Learn what is expected of you. When the semester begins, read over the course materials and make sure that you understand everything that is expected of you. If you do not understand something, then ask the instructor to explain it to you. Highlight important details in your assignment sheets and other course materials. For example, you might want to highlight keywords for assignments such as describe, argue, compare, etc. 6. 
copy down all of the important due dates for your English class in your planner or on a wall calendar to make it easier for you to remember them. 2. Plan ahead. Figure out how much time you will need to complete your assignments. Read books and essays, and study for tests. Make sure that you set aside plenty of time to complete these objectives every week. Procrastinating is a sure way to fail your English class. If possible, start your assignments at least a week before they are due. Having plenty of time is especially important for writing essays. Starting early will provide you with more time to develop and revise your work. 7. Keep in mind that in college-level English courses the majority of your grade will come from assignments that are later in the semester. For this reason, make sure that you do not burn yourself out early in the semester. Take good care of yourself and reserve plenty of energy to finish the semester. 8. 3. Find a study partner or group. Studying with a classmate or a couple of classmates can improve your grades and make it easier for you to pass your English class. Plan to meet at least once per week to study and quiz each other. Try to team up with classmates who are good students. Studying with someone who is a good student will make it easier for you to excel in. English class than studying with someone who is struggling. 9. If you plan to study with a friend or group of friends, it can be easy to get distracted talking about other things. To prevent this from happening, try studying at the library. The quiet environment should make it easier for you and your study group to stay focused. 10. Method 5. Performing well in class. Download article. 1. Come to class. Attendance is essential for passing any class, but it may be even more important in an English class where participation may make up a large part of your grade. Make sure that you are present in body and mind whenever you attend your English class. Never sleep in class. Silence your cell phone and always keep it stowed away during class. Avoid chatting with your classmates, especially when your instructor is talking. 2. Take notes in class. Much of what your English instructor talks about during lectures will end up on your tests and exams for the course. This information can also be helpful. When you are writing papers, make sure that you take good notes during class to earn as many points as possible on your English class assignments. 11. Write as much as you can during class to help you retain the information. Things that your instructor writes on the board or includes on a PowerPoint may be even more important to remember, so be sure. To write these things down. If you have trouble keeping up, then you may consider recording lectures, with your instructor's permission, or asking a friend to compare notes with you after class. 3. Speak up. If your instructor ever says something that does not make sense or that you'd like to know more about, make sure that you speak up. Raise your hand and ask your Instructor to repeat, explain, or expand on what he or she just said. Keep in mind that most instructors are happy to elaborate on a point if it will help you to understand it. Just make sure that you are listening closely because an instructor may find it annoying if you are always asking him or her to repeat things that have already been explained. 4. Meet with your instructor outside of class. Your instructor probably has regular office 
hours where you can drop in or make an appointment to meet with him or her one on one. Make sure that you take advantage of this valuable resource. 12. Meeting with your instructor outside of class is a great way to get some extra help with assignments, ask questions that you didn't want to ask in class, or just get more information about something. Try to meet with your English instructor at least once per semester. 5. Go above and beyond. If you really want to excel in your English class, then look for ways to go above and beyond your instructor's expectations. If your instructor ever says that something is a good idea, but that it is optional, do it anyways. These extra assignments can help you to increase your knowledge and that may improve your grade. Some instructors even offer extra credit for completing optional assignments. 13. For example, if you are assigned a short story and your instructor says it might be a good idea to get a little background on the story's reception. After you read it, then do it. If your instructor recommends flashcards as a good option for improving your vocabulary, then make some flashcards. Method 6. Passing your English tests. Download article 1. Study in short sessions. Rather than staying up all night for one big cram session the night before a test, try studying in small sessions over the course of a week. Studying in smaller sessions will make it easier for you to retain the information that you take in and it will be less stressful for you as well. 14. For example, if you have a test on Friday and you expect that you will need to study for about 6 hours to get a passing grade on the test, then break your study sessions into 3 2 hours sessions over the course of the week. Make sure that you take a short break every 45 minutes as well. Most people can't concentrate for more than 45 minutes at a time. So taking a short break, about 5 to 10 minutes, will help you to reset and stay focused. 15. 2. Attend any review sessions that are offered. Some instructors offer review sessions before an exam to go over the material that will be on the test. Make sure that you attend these sessions whenever they are offered. It can be tempting to skip review classes, since it is a review of old material, but you will increase your chances of passing English if you attend. 3. Take a practice test. Before you take the actual test, taking a practice test may be beneficial. Try asking your instructor for some practice test questions to help you. Prepare or come up with some practice questions of your own. You can create a practice test based on your knowledge of what will be on the test. When you take the practice test, make sure that you simulate an actual test environment. Put away your notes, books, etc. and time yourself. Check your answers when you are done and use your results to help you. Figure out what you need to spend more time studying. 4. Get a good night's sleep before the test. Being well rested is one of the best ways to ensure that you will be able to focus on a test. Make sure that you go to bed a bit earlier than usual the night before your English test. For example, if your usual bedtime is 11 p.m., try going to bed at 10 p.m. instead. Community Q&A Question How do I learn to change passive voice for active? Purple Cake Caroline Community Answer Just try your best to memorize what passive voice and active voice are. In passive voice, 
the subject is being acted upon. An example of this is the letter was mailed by Marilyn. Letter is the subject, and mailed is the verb. In active voice, the subject performs the action denoted by the verb. An example of this is Colorful parrots live in the rainforests. Parrots is the subject, and live is the verb. Not helpful 6 helpful 21. Question. What is a summary? Community answer. A summary is a shorter, condensed version of something written or spoken. Not helpful 8 helpful 19. Question. Where do I get novel to study? Donegan, top answerer. 14,734 answers. Knows about mathematics, algebra, calculating volume and area, and more. Donegan. Top answerer. Try a library or a bookstore. Not helpful 7 helpful 12. See more answers. Ask a question. How to have fun with your cousin for a week. Download article. Parts. 1. Planning ahead. 2. Entertaining your cousin. 3. Having fun at home. Other sections. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Article summary. Co-authored by Jesse Davidson. Last updated, the 19th of July, 2023. If you are spending the week with your cousin, make sure that they have a good time. If your cousin is visiting from out of town or just has a free week, make some plans to have fun. Spend some time planning ahead to make sure you're well prepared. Find some great entertainment options in your area. Lastly, spend some time having fun around the house. Traveling and going out gets tiring. Downtime with them can be fun as well. Part 1. Planning ahead. Download article. 1. Make sure your cousin is properly accommodated. If your cousin is visiting, you want to make sure they are properly accommodated. This is especially important if your cousin is staying in your home. If your cousin is staying at your house, make sure you have everything ready. Things like towels and toiletries are easy to forget. Set aside some space like an extra closet or drawer for them to keep their things. 1. You should also make sure your cousin's electronic needs are met. No. What kind of phones and computers your cousin uses? Find some extra charges lying around to properly accommodate him or her. 2. Create a homey vibe. Provide fresh sheets, pillows, and blankets for the guest room or sofa. Add something a little extra like a fresh bouquet of flowers or a card welcoming your cousin to your home. 3. Stock up on extra food. You may be eating out a lot, however, you should have options for meals at home as well. Healthy breakfast food, like yogurt, fruit, and cereal, is important. Have some snacks, like chips and crackers, as well as some basic staples in case you decide to cook at home one night. 2. Find fun restaurants in your area. Eating out is one of the most fun aspects of visiting friends or relatives. Even if your cousin just has a week off school or work, exploring food options in your own town can also be fun. Spend some time finding restaurants in your area. Make sure to accommodate everyone's eating habits. Ask your cousin if he or she has any special dietary restrictions. Your cousin may be 
allergic to shellfish, for example, or vegetarian forward slash vegan. Find restaurants that meet these needs. Go for establishments within your budget. If your cousin is visiting from college, for example, he or she may not want to drop a lot of money at a five-star restaurant. You can search restaurants by price range on websites such as Yelp. Ask friends and co-workers for suggestions as well. If you have a Facebook page, consider posting a status saying your cousin is in town or taking a week off. Ask people for suggestions of good restaurants and specifics on what you're looking for, for example, something cheap, something with vegan options, etc. 3. Make a guest checklist. A guest checklist sounds a little formal, but it can really help. You plan a fun trip. If your cousin is visiting from another area, consider making a checklist to make sure all of his or her needs are met. First, ask your cousin for his or her travel itinerary. You want to know when you need to pick him or her up from the airport or bus station. Jot these things down on the checklist so you remember. 4. You should also list anything you need to do on your end. You may want to give your apartment a good cleaning. You might have to get the air mattress out of storage or change the sheets in the guest bedroom. If your cousin has any special accommodations, make sure you keep those in mind. For example, if your cousin is bringing her dog along for the trip, consider stocking up on dog treats. 5. If you haven't seen your cousin in a while, it may be nice to buy him or her a small present. You don't have to go overboard, but a nice card and a small gift, like a box of chocolates, could be a nice touch. 4. Ask your cousin what he or she wants to do. Lastly, keep in mind what your cousin wants to do. When you have a guest in town, you may be over eager to show him or her your favorite places in town. However, keep your cousin's interests as the primary focus. Ask your cousin to give you a call or shoot you an email and tell you some things he or she is interested in doing. If you know your cousin, you may already know some of his or her interests. However, it is not a bad idea to let your cousin have some direct input. If you live in a big city, there is a good chance your cousin already has some plans. It's a good idea to know what these plans are ahead of time. So you can find the best ways to carry them out. For example, say you live in Los Angeles and your cousin wants to go to Venice Beach. You can see which days Venice is the least crowded to avoid traffic and difficulty. Parking. Keep your cousin's personal interests in mind. If your cousin is a Passionate animal lover, for example, do some research on local zoos. 5. Plan accordingly for younger guests. If your cousin is younger, make sure to take his or her age into consideration. Younger relatives may need special considerations. A very young child may need a nightlight or other comforting objects to help him or her sleep. You may want to provide some age-appropriate toys. You can stop by a local supermarket and browse the toy section. Toys are usually labeled by age group. You may want to plan events appropriate for someone younger. Look into local parks, children's museums, and so on. If you work or go to school. A younger relative may require supervision when you're gone. Make a plan for a babysitter. If your cousin is in high school or middle school, things may be a little easier. 
children of this age are usually more independent. You may be able to leave your cousin home alone. However, make sure you plan events accordingly. For example, you obviously cannot take someone this young to an establishment that serves alcohol. You may want to look into fun, cool events targeted at teens. Maybe a local community center has a music night for teenagers. Part 2. Entertaining your cousin. Download article. 1. Check out local parks. Many towns and cities have local parks. This can be a fun option. If your cousin is in town, taking a long walk through a park is a low-cost form of entertainment. Many parks have free or low-cost performances on certain days of the week. Browse a schedule online and see if anything fun is coming up the week your cousin wants to spend with you. 6. If you live in a big city, like New York City, Central Park can be a great place to take an out-of-town visitor. If the weather's nice, you can have a lot of fun simply walking through the park and seeing the famous landmarks and statues. Some parks have street performers. If you live in an area where street performers are common, this is something your cousin may enjoy. 7. If you have a younger cousin, a park or a playground can be wildly entertaining for him or her. On your end, you can look up some games to play with children. For example, playing tag in Central Park for an afternoon can be a fun activity for when your 10-year-old cousin visits New York City. 2. Visit museums and art galleries. Almost every city has some kind of museum or art gallery. If your cousin is visiting, consider showing him or her the local culture. Remember, everyone's tastes are different. Try to cater to your cousin's personal interests. If you live in Chicago and your cousin is an art lover, she'll really enjoy the art institute. However, if she's more into culture and history, consider taking her to the Field Museum instead. Look for deals on museums if you're on a budget. If you're a member at a particular museum, you may be able to get a guest in for free. Websites like Groupon often offer discount tickets for local museums. 3. See any plays or concerts in your area. If your cousin is interested in music or theater, be on the lookout for plays and concerts in your area. If you live in a small town, local theaters or colleges often put on shows for cheap. Bigger cities almost always have some kind of theater. As for music, be on the lookout for fun local concerts. If you're on a budget, check out the local music scene. Many bars have. Local bands play for very cheap. There may only be a $5.10 cover, for example. 8. If you live near a college, you may be able to find tickets for a college. Production for cheap. If you live in a bigger city, you can often find. Discount tickets sold the day of a performance. Once again, keep your cousin's tastes in mind. If your cousin is a fan of punk rock music, he or she probably won't enjoy a country music show. If your cousin is not a fan of serious movies and TV shows, the local production of August Osage County may not interest him or her. 4. Go out to eat. Going out to eat can be a fun way to socialize with your cousin, while also trying local cuisine. Make a point of going out to eat during your week with your cousin. Be open to trying new foods, 
especially if your cousin has adventurous tastes. Together, you guys can try a type of food you've never before eaten. Make reservations when it's necessary. If you're both hungry, waiting for a table on a Friday night can get tiring. If you're eating out on the weekend, reservations may be a good idea. Try to find restaurants that offer other forms of entertainment as well. For example, a bar forward slash restaurant with karaoke could be fun if your cousin is 21. 9. 5. Include your cousin in any plans you have. When you have a guest in town, you want to make sure you include them in your plans. You can allow your cousin to meet your friends and keep him or her entertained in the process. 10. You may have regular social engagements you attend. For example, maybe you always do trivia night on Tuesdays at a local pub. See if your cousin wants to join. If you've been invited to any parties or get-togethers that week, bring your cousin along. Talk to the hosts of any events ahead of time, however, and make sure you can bring a guest. You should always check with your cousin first as well. If your cousin hates bars and trivia, maybe you can sit out trivia this one week. 6. Take your cousin to fun local establishments. It can be fun to show your cousin all your favorite places around town. If there's a coffee shop you love, take your cousin there. If there's an amazing local bookstore, bring your cousin there for an afternoon. Do some research ahead of time, especially if you live in a big city. A trendy dive bar in the Wicker Park district of Chicago may be one of your favorite places. However, it may be completely packed on a Saturday night. It may be easier to hit it up on a Wednesday. Let your cousin call the shots a little. While you want to show him or her your town, make sure you're choosing things that are fun for your cousin. If the idea of going to a local comic book store bores your cousin to tears, you may want to pick a local attraction more suited to your cousin's interests. 7. Keep your cousin's age in mind. If you're hosting a younger relative, keep age in mind. You cannot take someone who's not 21 to a bar, for example, and an adult-themed play may not be entertaining or appropriate for an elementary school student. Try to keep age in mind as you make plans. For a cousin who is still in elementary school, be on the lookout for entertainment specifically marketed towards children. Look for children's theaters, children's museums, parks, petting zoos, and so on. If you have any friends who love kids, invite them out for an afternoon. For a middle school or high school aged cousin, you can provide a mix of entertainment options. A 14 year old may have an interest in a play marketed for adults. However, a 14 year old may still be shy about trying new or different foods. Keep a balance between kid and adult. Friendly entertainment. Take your 14 year old cousin to a symphony, but go to McDonald's for dinner afterwards. Part 3 Having fun at home. Download article 1 Be yourself. If you're having your cousin stay with you, do not go overboard trying to impress him or her. It's okay to be yourself. If you're relaxed, both you and your cousin will have more fun. You should keep your home relatively clean if you have guests. This is a common courtesy. However, you don't need to make your apartment immaculate. 
If you're the type that occasionally has a few dishes in the sink, don't worry about it. 11. Allow your cousin to relax as well. If you have guests, they'll likely do things slightly differently than you. Try to let this go. Your cousin may put her feet on the coffee table or leave the coffee machine on for a few hours after brewing a fresh pot. Even if you prefer things differently, try to be laid back when you have a visitor. 12. 2. Provide food at home. If you want to have fun at home, provide snacks. If you like baking, making a batch of cookies before your cousin arrives can be fun. You can also try to prepare some meals at home. Eating out can get costly. You and your cousin can plan to cook dinner together a couple of nights. 13. Consider having a theme dinner night. For example, prepare an Italian meal. Make a batch of homemade lasagna and prepare a nice salad and garlic bread as sides. If your cousin is 21, buy some red wine. If you grew up with your cousin, go for nostalgic snack choices. Maybe the two of you have fond memories of eating Twizzlers while watching scary movies. Buy a few packs of Twizzlers in preparation for your cousin's visit. 3. Invite friends over. If going out is expensive, stay in for the evening. Invite a group of friends over. You can have some drinks, if your cousin is 21, and just hang out. This can be a low-cost option that can be great if your cousin is on a budget. Consider scheduling a game night. Board games can be a fun means to entertain big groups. Try having a potluck. Invite each guest to bring a dish and pass the dishes around to share. This is a great way to take care of a meal while also socializing with your cousin. 4. Have entertainment options available. If you want your home to be warm and inviting, keep entertainment options available. Four nights when you're staying in, you want to make sure there are things to do at your house. If you have a television set, you could watch movies or play video games. Consider renting some movies, online or at a rental store, that you're cousin would enjoy. Pick up a pack of cards. Cards are very cheap and card games can be fun. If your cousin has any hobbies, keep those in mind. For example, if your cousin loves crossword puzzles, buy a book of crossword puzzles. 5. Provide reading material. Chances are, you won't be around to entertain your friend all the time. You should provide some reading material. Set out some fun magazines and fun coffee table books for your cousin to browse while you're busy. Short story anthologies are also nice for guests. Your guests can feel like they're accomplishing something as people are able to finish a short story in one sitting. A longer novel can be frustrating because you're cousin may be unable to finish the story before the week is up. 14. 6. Sit and talk. Sometimes, it can be fun to simply enjoy one another's company. If you haven't seen your cousin in a while, take this as an opportunity to catch up. Have your cousin fill you in on her job, work, social life, and so on. You can also reminisce about old times. If you grew up together, you probably have lots of fun, childhood stories to recount. Share your favorite memories. Try to start off a conversation with remember when. And then bring up something fun from the past. 
Catch up on what your cousin has been doing. He or she may have some fun stories to share from work or school. Talk about other family members. If you don't see your Aunt Jean much anymore, ask your cousin how she's doing. Share news about your parents as well. Minimize distractions to help conversation flow. Turn off the TV and keep music volume low. 7. Incorporate entertainment for a younger cousin. If you're hosting a younger cousin, you should make sure your at-home entertainment is age-appropriate. You do not want your 12-year-old cousin to grow bored if you don't keep his or her age in mind. Look for age-appropriate movies, TV shows, and reading materials. There is a special kids section on Netflix you could browse. You can ask friends with kids for advice on children's movies. Look for magazines at the supermarket that are kid friendly. Buy some young adult books to keep in your home. For a very young cousin, coloring books, crayons, markers, and other child-friendly craft options can be a great touch. Look into what music your cousin likes. Create a pad or a station with all of his or her favorite artists. Expert Q&A. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Tips from our readers. Set out magazines, books, puzzles etc. to entertain your cousin during downtime. At home. Make sure they are age appropriate if hosting a younger guest. Have friends over for game nights. It's inexpensive and allows your cousin to get to know your social circle. Cook a themed dinner together one night. It's a fun way to bond over food and Saves money over eating out. Plan some activities you both enjoyed as kids to tap into nostalgia. Reminiscing. Can strengthen your bond. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published.